Welcome to Office 2010 video 29. Hey, we're still talking about Excel and number formatting. We're back on the sheet assumptions. Now, we did some payroll calculations here. Okay, I just want to remind you that we already did some payroll calculations. Now, we're going to go to a different sheet. I'm going to scroll ahead here. Round for deduction. I'm going to do a little calculation just like we did back on that assumption sheet, calculating a deduction. Here's the taxable earnings, and here's the deduction. This is the tax rate. I want to first show you that this cell is preformatted. If I type 2, enter, 2, enter, I can very clearly see that this is preformatted with accounting. We talked about that in the last video. But now we want to make our calculation. Equals one cell to the left. Oh, yeah, the earnings times our deduction, our tax rate. Now I'm going to copy this down, so I'm going to hit the F4 key one and two times to lock the row reference. We're going to copy down across the rows. Control Enter. There we go, $143.96. And that is exactly to the penny how much has to be subtracted from that paycheck. Copy it down one. Click F2. All right, $74.49 has to be subtracted from that amount, and then you figure out what their net earnings are. All right, this is just a simple example, right? The tax would probably be more than that. Now let's add these up. Alt equals is the keyboard shortcut for auto sum, and then enter. So you made these calculations, and your boss comes over. <laughs> And your boss may not know Excel very well, but she does know how to add in her head. And she, she quickly does 143.96 and 74.49. She goes, that is not $218.46. I do not want you making an error, even if it's only a penny on my watch. And so you're like, what? And so you come over here, and I'm going to type what I see in cell B2. I'm going to type 143.96, enter. I'm going to type what I see here, 74.49, enter, and then I'm going to do Alt equals. And by the way, even though your boss caught you making a mistake here, she still was impressed with the keyboard shortcut for auto sum, and then enter. And you're, you're stunned for just a minute, just for a, just a moment, right? Because I type this number in, I type this number in, and the sum function is adding correct, it really is 218.45. I'm off by a penny. Formatting as facade is what is getting us in trouble here. And when we're doing calculations like payroll or invoices, we could get into big trouble because we can actually make errors that matter. I want to highlight all these cells and I want to increase the decimal. We added a button here, and there's the problem. When you apply a formatting, even though uh, we saw, I'm going to decrease this, even though I see the 96 and the 49, I applied the formatting, the number formatting, but that's just sits what sits on top. Underneath those unrounded numbers are still sitting there. So when I increase the decimals, that 4 and that 3 were actually in the cell. So the sum function down here, of course, does not look at the formatting, it looks at the unrounded number underneath. Now we already saw one example like this earlier when we built a text formula. Formulas do not look at, at formatting. So we have to talk about what here? Rounding. When you are doing calculations and multiplying decimals like this, these are pennies and this is some decimal. When you're multiplying or dividing decimals, uh, you have to watch out because you may get extra little pennies hanging out here. So what do we do? We round. Well, the rule for rounding, and by the way, I have a bunch of notes down here for actually how you'd round by hand, the guidelines for when to use the round function, and uh, examples, a bunch of other examples for round. But let's just do it um, by hand here. You first, when you're rounding, you have to pick the position. So we're talking pennies. One, two, oh, that's the penny position right there. Let me blow this up even bigger. So when you're rounding by hand, you pick the position. Then you look to the right. You say, is that five or greater? If it were five or greater, you'd hack all these off and add a one there and get a seven. But they're not. You actually hack all these off. So it should be 0.96 in the cell. Here, we say, one, two, that's the nut. That position right there is when I want to round. I look here. 
I see the 3. It's not 5 or greater. 5 or greater, I'd have to add one there. This would become 50, but it's not, so I hack them off. So somehow I need to remove that 4 and that 3. I don't want to do it by hand. I want the formula to do it. No problem. Click in the cell and hit F2. Luckily, there's a function called what? What do you think they called it? Round. So we just have to take this calculation here, put a round function right here, and then tell it what position to round to. So I'm going to type round. Round open parentheses. And here we have the solution. Anytime you're doing payroll or invoicing or anything like that, you got to use the round. All right, so right here, that's our number. But notice it says comma, and then it's politely asking, tell me how many digits you want to round to. So I'm going to click right there. Sometimes when the formula is hanging out past the edge of this B column, it's safer to come up here and click. But I'm going to be dangerous here just for the video. I'm going to type a comma, number of digits. Now, the way I memorize this uh, is that I'm doing pennies, right? Here's the decimal. One. Two, since the position I want to round to is a penny, that's two to the right of the decimal. So that's how I memorize it, two. So pennies is two. Now, if we were rounding to this penny and it was two, what if we were rounding here? Well, there's the decimal, one, two. So it would be a one. If we were one, two, three position, we would type a three. But I just always memorize it by saying penny, one, two, two. Now, what about if you were doing income taxes. We have to round to the dollar. Well, if this is 2 and this is 1, what's this? 0. This would be minus 1, minus 2. All right, so I always memorize it 2, 0, because those are the ones I basically use all the time. All right, if you forget that, you can always click up here, go to the little blue link for help, and um, it tells you all about it there. I'm going to control enter and now we can see I have the fo the formatting showing decimal so we can see that that 0 is I mean that 4 is gone. Now when I copy this down, watch the 3 disappear right there. Gone. And now our formula is correct. Um, again, if you there's notes down here. Uh, there's our guidelines for 1 2 3 when you have to use the round function. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go through the rules. The rule for when to round is, first off, you're required to round. If you're dealing with money, there is no partial penny. So you have to round, right? So the first requirement is you have to round. You're required to round. Second is you're multiplying um, decimals or dividing decimals. So number two, multiply and dividing decimals. And three, if we were never going to add this up here, let me just control Z, Z. Uh, let me just get rid of this real quick. I'll, you don't have to do this. Right, see the four and three is back. And you could see the sum function added the seven, but let me just decrease these. If you are only looking at the numbers and you're not going to be adding them in a subsequent uh, formula, then who cares? The number formatting works, right? See, I just want to get rid of it because I'm only looking at the numbers. So for example, if you're calculating them and then you're going to write them on a piece of paper, it doesn't matter. But we, it does for us because we are adding down here. Now I'm going to control Z. This is a, these calculations. Are you being used in a subsequent formula? Forget it. You have to round. So one, we're required to round. Two, we're multiplying or dividing decimals. And three, we, ha we have a subsequent formula that, you that is using our uh, result up here. Let me get it back there. OK, so there we have it. Again, if you download the sheet, all of the uh, rules are written out on here. Now, we've got to go back over here because we did this great problem over here on the assumptions sheet. But boy, did we forget something or what? Now, we did increase all the decimals. But sure enough, our rule is what? We're required to round? Well, yeah, sure, because we're deducting these pennies from their paycheck and recording official federal tax information. We're required to round. 
2, are we multiplying or dividing decimals? Yeah, look at these. These are decimals. And 2, are we using this calculation as subsequent uh, formula? Yes. So guess what? We got it wrong. And I'm going to put uh, 0.91 down here, 0.66. 0.26, just to remind us, I hard coded those in so when we change our formula, these will update because there's inevitably some error in here. Now, sometimes you can luck out and you don't have an error, but I'm not going to risk it. So I'm actually going to come here and watch this. So far in this class, usually I create a formula, we copy it down and over, but I'm going to do this trick. Remember the control enter? There's four columns of formulas. I'm going to hit F2, the active cell, and I'm going to edit it, and when I control enter, it'll populate all of these cells with the formula. So I do round, I'm doing money, so I just, my memorization trick is decimal, one, two to the penny, so I'm going to put a number of digits, two. Now, control enter to populate all these, and sure enough, well, there was only one penny off there, it was listed at 66 when it should have been 67. All right, so round, very important. One last note. Remember, the first requirement is you're required to round. Here's an example if we go over to the next sheet, formula inputs. This is a budget. We are estimating the future. And usually when it comes to budgets, you know, we're not filling out official paychecks. Money is not handing changing hands, we're not filling out federal documents, and we're not giving change or charging a customer's credit card or something like that, where even a few pennies off can make the customer or the employee not trust the person doing the calculation. This is a budget. This is an estimate. Inevitably, there are a few pennies off here, but, you know, it doesn't matter. We're estimating the unknown future, and a few pennies not is not really going to matter. All right, uh, rounding, very important. Um, next couple videos, we'll have uh, some specific videos about date, time, and percentages. See you next video.